I'm Joe Hilt. I'm uh, Vice President of Sales and Marketing in the U.S. for Hibernian Atlantic. <clears throat> I think uh, Hunter said a lot of my points, but we'll go over them a little bit in detail, different way. This is currently a map of uh, the 86 modern cables uh, via telegeography that basically connect us all today. I think when we look at the cables and differentiate how people have built their networks over time, I think the first thing we look at is the ownership of the cable. Is it a privately held cable? Is it a consortium? <clears throat> Difference being, obviously, with the privately held, there's really just one point of contact to make a decision on these cables, uh, whether it be repair, upgrade, backhaul systems, as opposed to the consortium, where it really has to come down to a majority. Uh, the reason for the consortium, as Hunter was saying, really comes down to cost. So with the private guys, we feel like we break the bottleneck. And speaking on cost, a lot again, what Heather said, um, the design phase, originally, especially before 2001, for a lot of these cables that are here today, cost was the number one concern. Uh, diversity wasn't near the same type of uh, issue as it is today. So the focus on cost control and efficient design has left customers little to no alternatives. And I think that's what we really try to pitch in the transatlantic space. As Hunter was saying, and I'll show you a little bit later down here in this presentation, a lot of these guys are eight, nine, ten cables on a 14-inch conduit, pitching diversity between uh, transatlantic cables. Again, uh, December 2006, all these cables are cut. Happened in the Pacific, can it happen in the Atlantic? And the answer is obviously yes. It can happen in the Atlantic, it can happen in the Pacific again. Uh, we need refocused attention for physical network diversity and planning. This is a little marketing slide we try to use at Hibernia. It really basically shows you the 12 cables today that connect uh, the US over into uh, Europe. As you can see, there's 12 cables, 24 landing stations, 15 of the cables all land on common backhaul routes, whether it be Long Island, uh, New Jersey, or in Southwest uh, England. And I'll show you a little bit more about that and how this uh, really affects so what is a natural catastrophe? My favorite really is the, uh, the car in the pole up here on the top left. It's an actual picture. It was taken in Long Island. It's literally on a transatlantic landing station. Uh, before Hibernia, I worked for a company called Keyspan. We built most of the dark fiber networks for these back walls. That is a picture taken by my engineer of a car. He had a guardrail, went up and took down the entire back wall for multiple transatlantic cables on one side. Outside of that, obviously, we have a couple more uh, car pileups, fishing accidents, obviously the World Trade Center, uh, some boats literally pulling cables to shreds. So it brings us to backhaul. So we have two major backhaul systems that we're really showing, actually three here. Now on the top left you have the Long Island backhaul system, really brings you back uh, four cables today, four different landing stations all on the same common backhaul route. You have uh, New Jersey on the top right, Again, three major transatlantic cables coming back on, on one backhaul system. And probably the biggest one being the UK down here, where we have uh, three, three real landing stations, eight cables, all on the same backhaul system. Literally, in one 20, 23 manhole stretch, we found eight cables jammed to the same conduit. I guess Hunter said, the government has really kind of come out since 9-11, 2003, they, they released a document, the fiscal protection of critical infrastructure and key assets. Uh, it's a document that came out. What they're protecting, it doesn't really 100% say. Uh, Hibernia is, is one of the, the cables that they found that is critical infrastructure. Um, but there's little effort being made for global to action to safeguard international communications is basically the point. Again, it's just uh, another quick marketing slide showing, uh, if you look on this in a 30 mile radius on the bottom right hand corner, you have seven cable stations. Not just physically diversely undifferent in the transatlantic place, but physically diversely undifferent in the backhaul systems back into New York City. So some of the things we try to do at Hibernia to uh, differentiate ourselves from this is provide different backhaul systems. Uh, you'll see the one in the UK on the top and the right, Southport is where we land our cables, bring our cables down from a completely different manner 
than most of the other cables, or I should say all the other cables today. Again, this is just a quick Hibernia network map. I think one of the couple things that we wanted to show here, and I'm apparently missing a slide. One of the things, speaking to what Hunter was saying also, is we've been trying to build around the 60 Hudson streets, around the telehouse and lots of the world. So what Hibernia has done from a real estate perspective is now started to build networks that actually do not touch these facilities. So what we've done is in the northern route, up in the UK section, we've uh, built some dark fiber that basically allows our customers to connect Amsterdam over into New Jersey, not touching London, not touching Manhattan, not touching 60 Hudson Street, not touching Telehouse. Same thing on the south. Uh, we've got now routes that connect Paris, Frankfurt, Brussels, all on the south route, take you around to Chicago, Ashburn, uh, New Jersey, Halifax, Montreal, anywhere on the network without touching those key real estate points. That's it.